one of those top two or three positions. Do you want to be number one in the world? I would love to be number one in the world. Uh, <laughs> it's the last ten years. It's been very hard because one guy has won most of the points. I mean, he wins every second major, or for a period of period, he wins every second major. He's won uh, fifteen WGCs. I mean, a ridiculous amount of these tournaments, and they carry the most points. So it's been hard. But um, I think even if he starts playing next week. There might be a loss of edge, maybe, I don't know. Who knows? We know what's going, to, what's going to happen, but I would love to be number one. To be number one, you have to play really well for an extended period of time. I mean, VJ got to number one in the Tiger era, and he won ten times that year. You know, So you're going to have to win a lot of tournaments. Um, I think number one is, if you get to number one, you've had a really good, long, a, an extended period of playing really, really well, and that would just be the, I think number one would be the bonus. It'd be nice. Um, I still think even when VJ was number one in the world everyone still viewed Tiger as the best player in the world so I think in the Tiger era it's going to be hard to be viewed as the best player in the world but to be ranked number one would be pretty nice if you, especially if you could hang on to it for a period it would be a, a good feather in the cap if you like So just nine more victories this year Jeff. Just nine more, yeah okay. <laughs> Greg? Yeah, you've had great success over... Oh, oh, You've had great success over in Hawaii now, and you've had uh, great success here in Tucson. How do you uh, explain that to you know us to be able to? What what's the comfort level? How do you have that comfort level? Is it just uh, a certain mindset? I don't know actually. The match play, in particular, I just love the format. I grew up Australian amateur golf and junior golf. There's a lot of match, I mean, it's predominantly match play. And that happens in the US as well. But I think a lot of our biggest amateur tournaments are match play as well, whereas the US, they tend to be strokes. I think uh, Australians, anyway, probably play a fraction more as juniors match play. So I just, and I always loved the format. I always thought it was fun that you could shoot 80 but still win. Um, <laughs> or that you could shoot 65 and lose. I mean, there's, there's both sides to that. Um, I liked the just me against that guy thing. I just enjoyed the, And I think whenever you enjoy something, you do it better, or you have a chance to do it better anyway. You're not going to enjoy it if you don't like it. Um, so with a match play, I think my comfort level is just enjoying the format, and I have fun, and that's... Um, it's, it's my adopted climate, if you like. I've, I mean, I live up in... The, Scottsdale, so I'm used to the desert stuff and I enjoy it. And it's a different, the desert's a little different when you, if you haven't, if you grew up in Florida, playing here is just a little different. The ball goes a long way and the valley effect you get, there's a bit of a valley effect on these golf courses that are on the side of these hills and stuff, you've got to get used to it. And I really like it. Hawaii, I'm not sure why I've, my first couple of times to Kapalua, I didn't quite understand what all the fuss was about and I didn't, this isn't paradise, this is, this is horrible, this place. It's on too big a hill and it's too windy and it rains and it's, what's everyone talking about? But, um, but I've learned to, I mean, I, I love the place now. It'd be a bit close to my favourite stop on tour. Not just because I won, I just started enjoying the golf course and understanding how to play it. Um, and I worked out that the first, the first year, particularly weather-wise, we had just a bizarre weather-wise and it rained a lot and stuff. And I didn't understand why people would want to go to the Pacific Island and sit in the rain. <laughs> but we just had a weird week and I just enjoyed it and I just got a bit more comfortable in the place and worked out as a golf course that really suited my game. And now it's, uh, along with this one, it's becoming one of my favorite events as well, Kapalua. So I don't know, it's just early in the year coming off a break, I think it's good for me too. Most of my success has been in January through March. So that's something I'm gonna have to work out. But obviously I thrive after taking some time off and relaxing, so. Maybe I need to do some mid-year relaxing. Uh, Other questions, Marty? Please. Jeff, Jeff, have you had a chance to uh, take a good look at the changes that have been made on, on the Scott course? And if you have, can you you know highlight a couple of those and how they'll make a difference in this tournament? I haven't actually been out in the golf course, but uh, a week or so ago, I saw the I saw the play the paper, the, the thing, what do you call it, the design changes on paper, and that's pretty well laid out in there, and because I went around the golf course, this is a, if you go all the way in this golf course, you play seven times, maybe, 
Six times. How many matches are there? Five. <laughs> six. Practice rounds. Don't say that. Six. Yeah, there's two. So you go around about seven or eight times with practice rounds and stuff. I think I know this course pretty well. And um, and the book's pretty good. And I've talked to the guys about what's happened. Um, and there was the only, there was a couple of changes. There was a couple of changes that I really like with some fairway bunkers. Take away that fourth hole was really hard for anyone to work out where to hit it last year. The couple of bunkers that made it weird have gone, and now it's going to be a really, really cool short par four. And it's just there was a couple of slopes that were a bit extreme, I think, for the speeds that we're used to, and I think they've just been softened a bit. So we're going to be able to get the the speed that a course like this deserves because the grass is perfect, you know, and you want to be able to have like fun pin positions, not just have to stick them just on the flat bits. You want a bit of slope. I mean, that's when golf's interesting, and I think this is just going to create. Um, what Jack had envisioned, I think, really. So I talked to him about it at Memorial, actually, if we go back to May. He, um, he was already talking about it, and he, they came in straight away and were pretty excited about improving it. So I think it'll just be the same, but enhanced. You know, you can, it, it'll have more dimensions because you can have more pin positions. Uh, Jeff, I was going to ask you a similar question about the uh, the greens and how you found them last year and how you expect them this year with those subtle changes and how all of that adds up to your particular game plan for coming into this year's event. I think, ironically, if you take a couple of slopes away, it'll probably get harder because they can have they can up the green speed a little bit and they can probably have, tuck a few pins behind some of these slopes that were perhaps a bit too extreme last year. Um, I don't think my game plan will change a whole lot because it worked out last year. And match play game plans are quite dependent on the guy. You, I mean, you might want to hit driver down the first hole, but if he hits it 50 yards in the bush, you don't hit driver down the first hole anymore. You know? So you, you've got to have a fluid game plan. Um, but I have a general idea how to play the golf course and I think it will probably play Similar to last year, but more interesting because there'll be a few different uh, pin positions, and putting will be putting will be if the greens are a bit faster and they're they're a year more developed, and they'll be a bit it'll it'll just be a short game will be a bit more valuable. I think uh, interesting. I think interesting is the right word because the pins are going to be uh, in spots that they maybe wanted to go last year, but they're a bit afraid. So we're good. Other questions? Right. Is your schedule in Wimbledon out in the next month or so? Yeah, we're having a baby in a month, so I'm actually going to play in Abu Dhabi next week. But that will be, uh, then I'll shut it down until we've had the baby and it's all going well. And then I may not play till here, but if the baby comes a week or so early, maybe I'll, um, but yeah, that's, uh, you want to be home for that. You don't have many opportunities to witness the birth of the child, so. Time for one more question. Please. Um, I'm just wondering, are you recognized a lot when you go out? Do people seem to know who you are? Or you do fly under the radar quite a bit? Pretty under the radar. It depends where we are. I mean, if walking around the Ritz-Carlton at Kapalua last week, everybody recognizes you because a lot of people there who, that's their winter vacation, I'm going to go watch the golf tournament and stay at the Ritz-Carlton. So they're kind of on the lookout for professional golfers. But if I walk through a mall in Dallas, nobody knows who I am, which is nice. <laughs> <laughs> so it depends where you are. If, you go, if I go to a Suns game in Phoenix, you might get it recognised a couple of times because Scottsdale people know that I live there. But if, I'm, if, you, if you're away from a golf tournament, nobody sees you. But if you're in a small town or in a town where the golf tournament is on that weekend, people are kind of on the lookout. So I can pretty much go anywhere I want and nobody sees, who sees me. It's perfect. I, I noticed you didn't uh, update your, your Twitter after your victory. Are you is social networking something you're trying to do? Is that you have to be mindful of that? Or is well, so many athletes I've definitely slowed down with the Twitter. I think I ran out, with, ran out of material very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> um, Twitter's an interesting thing. I haven't been on it for a while. Maybe I'll uh, start updating again. Jeff, thank you very much for joining us today.